Hi guys, this is George back here with another vlog and today I am here at Motion Gate Dubai for my first ever visit. I'm looking forward to getting inside this park and seeing what it has to offer. Seven different roller coasters for me to experience and so many more rides as well. Lots of dark rides to experience. There's a massive indoor area themed to DreamWorks. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. There is so much to go and see in this park. So let's get in and go and have a look around. <laughs> so I'm now inside the park and the plan of action originally was to start off in the DreamWorks area because it's so hot and I wanted to get indoors. However, as soon as I saw the Capital Bullet Train, I've just really wanted to get on it. I've been excited to get on this roller coaster for a long time. However, for some reason, as soon as I saw it, uh, as I was walking over to the park, I've just, it's all I've been thinking about. So I have to go over and get on it now because I'm really excited for it. This is a Mac launch coaster. However, it's got a multi-pass launch and it has a spike on here as well. Uh, I've never done a Mac roller coaster with a spike before, so I'm looking forward to this. Uh, it's got a couple of inversions on here uh, and it's themed to the Hunger Games. So let's go and get on it. Capital Bullet Train. So I've just experienced the Capital Bullet Train here at Motion Gate, my first ride here. And that was quite good to be honest. I did enjoy it. It's not one of my favourite roller coasters. I've not come off it and thought, oh my god, that is amazing. It is quite short and I think that's the thing that kind of lets it down the most for me. It's smooth. I love the restraints on there. And of course, you've got those nice Mac Rise lap bars. The launches were quite punchy for a Mac coaster as well, especially the backwards launch. I did really enjoy that. The spike was really good. There's some good airtime on there, uh, but it is quite short. In terms of how I rank it against other Mac launch coasters, I do prefer the other two that I've done, Icon and Velociraptor. However, uh, it's still a good ride, and yeah, I'd like to get some re-rides on there later. I'm now gonna go for a ride on John Wick Open Contract, an SNS 4D free spin. I haven't done one of these since 2018, and I did not enjoy it. It was the Joker at Six Flags Great Adventure that I did. I didn't enjoy it, so I'm going to go on this now. There we go. I'm going to get on this now and do the do the do what's most likely going to be my least favourite coaster now. That way, things will hopefully only get better. Yeah. But here we go. What I do like with this though, is how each side is themed to someone different. So if you can go on one side and you're the assassin, and then one side you're the uh, detective or something like that. So, because uh, of course it's kind of like a wing coaster. You can sit on either side of the track. Oh, this is well themed in here. Oh wow, this is really impressive. Thank you. Here we go, let's go and get on. John Wick, open contract. I'm not sure when the split off point is. Oh wow, this is really good in here. Here we go, it's advertised five minutes. So here we go. So there's actually two separate queues. A member of Star, oh here we go. I assume this is the assassin side with all of these weapons and then it looked like the other side was the detective side with all the computers and things like that oh yeah this is really good in here yeah so there's actually two different queues i thought uh that it was going to split off at some point but no there are two separate queues a member of staff just came down and said to use this side instead yeah much less people waiting in this one so I've just experienced John Wick open contract and I'll tell you what, it was good I did it when I did because it's advertised a 40 minute queue now. I waited about 10-15 minutes for it, which wasn't so bad. That thing is absolutely awful. There's not loads of places to get off-ride footage unfortunately. Uh, and it's the same with Capital Bullet Train and it's the same I think from what it looks like with the next coaster I'm about to go on. But that was absolutely terrible. The restraints on there are so uncomfortable, so tight. I thought the B&M vest restraints were bad. They are even worse. Uh, they were tight. And then the fact with the operations being quite slow on there as well, it meant we were being held on the brake run for ages. A good few minutes we were waiting on that brake run while the restraint was still on. Oh my God, it was so uncomfortable. Uh, it was just, it was rattling as well. Uh, it, it, it was really, really not smooth. Rattling around, really, really bad ride. I just, no, really, really terrible. I'm going on Now You See Me High Roller now, which is a Mara spinning coaster. Here we go, oh my God, I'm still in pain. Like literally my chest is still in pain from that restraint. Oh God, it was awful. Uh, like the vibration 
on there. Uh, it just rattled around and uh, like rattling your head around. Uh, no, it was so bad, so uncomfortable. I won't be going on there again. Here we go. I'm looking forward to this one. This is the only Mara spinning coaster to feature a non-inverting loop. And it's advertised five minutes, which is fantastic. Yeah, it does seem quite quiet here today. I imagine that 40 minute queue for John Wick is because of the slow operations on there. Yeah, it's literally dead in here. Other than the audio, when I'm speaking, it's literally just no sound. Here we go, let's go and get on. So there we go, Now You See Me High Roller has been ticked off the to-do list. I wish there were more places where you could get uh, footage and photos of all of these rides, because all three of the coasters I've done so far, there's not really many places where you can get off-ride footage. However, that was really good. That is probably my favourite Mara spinning coaster. The non-inverting loop on there was great. It's a tall coaster as well. It's got a massive first drop on there. It's a long ride. It's got some good elements. I really enjoyed that. It did start to lose its speed towards the end of the ride. However, it was really enjoyable. I really liked that. I'll definitely go for some re-rides on there later. And I only waited about five minutes as well, which was fantastic. Here we go. So I'm heading into the DreamWorks area now. This absolutely massive indoor area oh, here we go i'll just go this way so i don't get in the way of their photo uh there we go so yeah into the dreamworks section so there's four different sections as part of this indoor area you've got how to train your dragon shrek kung fu panda and something else as well madagascar that's the other one. Oh wow oh that aircon is so nice here we go so i'm going to start off in the madagascar themed area Unless, can you get, I, I might have to walk through one of the other, oh no, there we go, we can go through this way. So what's absolutely fantastic is one of the rides in here have reopened, so Madagascar Mad Pursuit, which is a Gerslauer Infinity Coaster. When I looked on the app before, on the website, before I came out here, it said it was closed for maintenance, so I was expecting to not be experiencing it. Literally, a couple of days ago, this reopened after its maintenance, so I'm gonna to get to experience this today. I've heard great things about it, and I'm really looking forward to experiencing it, because I was coming here uh, with the mindset that I'm not gonna get on it, and then when I was at IMG, I looked on the website, and it, it was off the closed list, so the maintenance is done, and I'm gonna be experiencing it today. It's got a 40 minute queue at the moment. However, do you know what? That's not too bad, so let's go for a ride. So as soon as I finished that last clip, the queue just went up to 60 minutes, so I decided, Instead of joining the queue just yet, I'm going to go around the rest of this DreamWorks area, go and see if there are any rides with a shorter queue, and if not, then I'll just get in whichever ride I'm closest to. So I'm heading into the Kung Fu Panda area now. Uh, the standout attraction in here is also closed for maintenance. Uh, I knew that before coming. Uh, this and Madagascar Mad Pursuit were on the clothes list however uh, that's reopened now this hasn't just yet but this is a really nice area it's very well themed as you can see we've got all the lanterns here we've got a Chinese restaurant there here we go yeah this is unstoppable awesomeness which is closed but yeah I'd rather this still be closed than Madagascar Mad Pursuit so yeah, that's all right. I feel like I've gone the wrong way as well. I'm, I'm trying to get to the how to train your dragon area because you've got uh, dragon gliders in there, which is a Mac suspended powered coaster. I don't think I was supposed to come this way. I th yeah, I thought it, oh, there we go. There's the exit over there. Unless, does it, I thought, I thought they could join up with I think I just came, where did I just come through? Oh, I just came through there, I literally walked past it. Is this, oh no, that's, is that a shop or? Oh gosh, I'm lost. <laughs> yeah, here we go, here's the central area. Right, let's head into the How to Train Your Dragon area.
So I've just had a ride on dragon gliders and that is absolutely brilliant. That is the perfect mix between coaster and dark ride. So you start off with a big dark ride section, uh, you go through there, there's a few drops indoors. Uh, of course this is a, a powered coaster by Mack Ride but it's suspended and the seats move as well so it turns to different directions uh, depending on if you're watching a screen or the theming uh, that you're looking at. Uh, there's a great mix between screens and theming in there, loads to look at throughout that dark ride section. It's much more intense than I was expecting to be fair. It is a very kind of relaxing ride but I didn't know it was going to have those drops indoors. I thought it was going to be pretty much uh, a dark ride with a small coaster section uh, going around the area. However there were more drops and it was faster than I was expecting in that dark ride section. And then you end the ride, uh, <coughs> oh sorry, you end the ride by then coming out into this area, I think it might be coming actually, uh, and you go, you do a massive flight, a big loop around this area where you get some amazing views. It is absolutely fantastic. Here we go, here it comes. Here we go, let's spin around this way. There it goes. Yeah, that's the end of the ride there. It's a long ride as well. You're on there for a good few minutes. That is fantastic. And I only waited 25 minutes for it when it was advertised a 40 minute queue. So I'll definitely have to give that a re-ride later. So I'm inside the Shrek area now and I'm about to experience my first dark ride here at this park. And it is Shrek's Merry Fairy Tale Journey. And it's advertised at a 15 minute queue. Let's go. Shrek's Merry Fairy Tale uh, Journey was quite good then. I tell you what, it was a difficult name to say. I keep wanting to say Merry Christmas. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it was a good dark ride to be honest, trackless dark ride, it's well themed, a great mix between screens and theming, however it is mainly physical props, there's only a few screens in there. That was really good actually, uh, yeah, well themed, immersive, onboard audio, uh, there is one thing though that lets it down a bit for me, and that is the animatronics, uh, because when you, you, you I, I imagine you've seen when you go to watch a puppet show, and all the puppets are being held up by strings, that's what it's like in there with the animatronics. All the animatronics are being held up by strings and you can see the strings really clearly. Uh, so therefore that does take away from the immersion a bit. Uh, but other than that, I think it was a good ride. So yeah, I'm back in the Madagascar area now and I'm gonna try and get on Madagascar Mad Pursuit. It's still advertised 60 minutes. However, with the fact that Dragon Gliders was half of what it was estimated. I waited half of what the estimated queue was. I'm hoping it's going to be the same with this. And to be honest, I'm not too bothered about waiting an hour for this now because I have uh, done quite a lot of the rides that I want to make sure I do. So I think the queue for Madagascar Mad Pursuit instantly went down after I joined the queue because it was advertised 60, it's now advertised 35, and I waited about 30 minutes for it. So uh, yeah, uh, much, quicker than advertised unless it did change just after I walked through the entrance. That was really good. The launch on there was very punchy. There was some good theming in the dark ride section. So you go through a little uh, show scene before the launch which is very well themed. There's also a show scene on the brake run which is very good. Not so much theming throughout the ride itself. I do wish there was more theming on the inside because there are some parts where you can just see all of the track and uh, no theming and a big empty building. However, there are some lighting effects in there and some arches that you go through, but the coaster itself is really good. Some good airtime on there. It was very fast. It kept the pace up really well and the launch was very punchy as well. I really enjoyed that. So I've got two more credits to get here at Motion Gate and as well as that loss of dark rides to experience as well. I'm now going for a ride on Green Hornet High Speed Chase, which is a Gerslau bobsled, co a Gerslau bobsled coaster. Yeah, so similar to Cobra at Poulton's Park. I'm looking forward to getting on this. It's advertised 40 minutes, so let's go. Once again, much shorter queue than advertised. It was advertised 40 minutes. I waited about 20, uh, so basically the pattern I'm noticing is that whatever's advertised, half that, and that's what you're going to be queuing. That's see, That seems to be what's going on today here at Motion Gate. Uh, so yeah, hopefully uh, that's a sign that the rest of the rides will be quite quiet. I'm not, if I would go up to a ride now and see 60 minutes uh, advertised, I'm not going to be too worried because I don't imagine it is going to be 60 minutes. So therefore, hopefully I can go around, get the other rides done that I need to do, and then have some re-rides. Uh, but that was a good coaster actually, Gerstal Bobsled Coaster, quite similar to Cobra, Holton's Park, a uh, slightly different layout, but it was really good. I really like those types of rides. The brakes were quite sharp on there, uh, so that made it a bit more uncomfortable. However, it was still an enjoyable ride.
I'm now going for a ride on Hotel Transylvania, which I believe is a trackless dark ride. I think it's trackless. So here we go. Let's go. This queue line is really well themed in here. It was advertised 20 minutes, however, I've literally just got to go through there, and that's where the station is. Yeah, this looks fantastic in here. This park is so well themed, and I've noticed as well, uh, from all the rides so far, all the queues are indoors, which is fantastic, so you don't have to be waiting uh, in the hot Dubai heat when waiting for the rides, which is good. But yeah, everywhere you look is just themed. Some amazing buildings around here. All of the rides have got a story. I absolutely love this park. Here we go, let's go and get on Hotel Transylvania. So there we go, I've just walked out of Hotel Transylvania and it's starting to get dark out here. Uh, so yeah, it looks like I'm gonna be hopefully able to get some night rides soon. Uh, yeah, I only waited about 15 minutes for that, which was good. Uh, and I thought it was quite good to be honest. Trackless dark ride, and I actually quite enjoyed it. It's well themed, it's quite a long ride, loads to see. There is one issue I have with it, and that is the fact that you can hear things from other scenes. So you'll be in one scene and you can hear things in the scene that you've just been through. So uh, it would be good if they had a door separating each scene maybe uh, so all of the sounds in that scene you don't hear while well, you're further down throughout the ride uh, but other than that I thought it was a good ride I'm heading on to Ghostbusters now as you can see five minute queue I think this is an interactive ride so I'm looking forward to seeing this here we go oh this is good in here Columbia University I absolutely love Ghostbusters. Here we go. Let's go and experience the ride. I've heard it's quite short, this one. However, hopefully it'll be well themed. See, so yeah, I pretty much walked straight onto Ghostbusters there, and I'm glad I did because it was nothing special. That it's an interactive trackless dark ride, same ride system as Hotel Transylvania and Shrek. However, there wasn't loads of theming on there. It's good that it's interactive because it t it distracts you from the fact that there's no there's not a lot of theming. It's very screen heavy, uh, and when there is theming, a lot of it is very 2D or vinyl stickers on the wall. Uh, there's not it's not very immersive. Uh, I do like that it's interactive uh, because it it. it kind of distracts you from that however it's it's nothing special that nowhere near as good as the other two dark rides I've experienced here so it might be getting dark now or quite close to being pitch black however I'm gonna go for a ride on the rapids here it's still advertised 40 minutes but here we go I'm gonna go for a ride on here this is cloudy with a chance of meatballs river expedition I'm looking forward to experiencing this because it looks quite well themed Yeah, here we go. It's quite a nicely themed queue line over here. Let's go and experience the ride. I'm hoping I'm not going to get too wet on here. So I've just experienced Cloudy with a chance of meatballs river expedition. I didn't get too wet on there, in fact I only got a couple of little splashes. Uh, there are a couple of effects on there uh, which got me, however if those effects weren't turned on I wouldn't have got wet at all. Uh, there were some other people on my boat though that did get quite wet. It's quite a good ride, it's well themed, the audio is great. There was a section on there which was quite funny where there was barely any current and we were just bobbing up and down on the water, we were barely even moving uh, so we kept having to kind of uh, scooch over to try and push the the boat in the direction we needed to go it was quite funny we were barely moving we were just bobbing up and down on the water yeah that was that was quite amusing it's quite a short rapids however I did enjoy it I thought it was quite good so now the plan is to head into the Smurfs village section of the park where there's a dark ride to get on and also my final coaster credit to get in there so let's head over and check them out so I walked straight on to the Smurf Studios tour, and that was a good ride actually, another trackless dark ride. They've got four trackless dark rides here, which is really good. Uh, I love the technology involved in these trackless dark rides. Uh, it was quite a short ride, however, it was very well themed. Really, really good, yeah, quite short, however. Uh, there's a storyline in there, they're making a movie, and then, yeah, it's a really nice ride.
so I did the Smurf Village Express coaster, uh, which was quite good actually. It was a good junior coaster. I pulled some forces. It was quite speedy going around there. And I've also just done a couple of re-rides as well. Uh, I did Dragon Gliders, and then I did Madagascar Mad Pursuit again. Uh, yeah, fantastic. I do love both of those coasters. They are really good. Of course, Dragon Gliders is the great is the, the mix between dark ride and coaster. That's my favourite ride here. And then Madagascar Mad Pursuit, the coaster itself is amazing. I just wish it was a bit better themed. The lap bars on there are great. It's quite intense, very whippy. Some good airtime on there. It is a really good coaster. Yeah, I just wish it was more theming uh, on there. Unfortunately, the queue lines have just closed. So here at Motion Gate, the queues close half an hour before park close. And my plan was to do Madagascar Mad Pursuit, then go over to Capital Bullet Train. And now you see me high roller. I wanted to do both of those again. However, the queues have literally just closed. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be getting my wee rides on those. However, I'm glad I got to do Dragon Gliders again. And then I thought there was going to be enough time for Madagascar Mad Pursuit and Capital Bullet Train. However, I literally just missed it, unfortunately. But all of these lights around here look fantastic. Of course, the winter event is still going on. All of the lights here look amazing. And when I turn this corner here, you're gonna see all the lights down the entrance street, which look incredible. There you go, you can get a little bit of a sneak peek over there. Let's get a bit closer. So then guys, that's now the end of this vlog here from Motion Gates. What an absolutely fantastic park. Really, really enjoyed it. Uh, some great rides there. It's a big park. It's very well themed. I did really enjoy it. So I'm now going to show you the merchandise from this park. So there were a few different mugs on offer from Motion Gate. However, I decided to go for this one because it was embossed. Uh, you can see there that all the writing is embossed. You've got Motion Gate Dubai. Uh, since 2016 there you can see and you've got uh, all of the different touches on there like what the entrance is like that that's the like what the entrance looks like yeah I really like this quite simple but yeah I do really like it so then guys that is now the end of this vlog here thank you very much for watching make sure to follow me on Instagram at George Kelly and follow me on Twitter at George Kelly thank you very much for watching stay safe everyone and I'll see you all later Bye.